Welcome back to another edition of History in Your Own Backyard. I'm Satoli. I'm here in Osgood, Indiana. I'm with Janet and Carol, and we're going to be talking about the Bilby Tower today. Hi, Janet. How are you? Good morning. What can, what can you tell us about the tower? Well, the tower was first erected in 1972 off a small island in Louisiana, um, Cuba, or is the name of the island in Louisiana and for about 21 years a uh, gentleman from the Historical Society the Geodetic um, Survey and Historical Society were have been looking for a tower to erect um, in honor of Bilby and the uh, troops of men who helped map the United States and it after 21 years of, of searching it, from 2010 to 2012 before they were able to get more information on the where it was in the site and and taking an initial drive out there before they were able to get permission to take it down in 2013 they were or 2012 they were able to take it down um, it got refurbished um, with re regavanized steel mm -hmm. and um, brought here to Osgood for that and in 2013 they put it up and in 2014 they were able to have a dedication and they put it in honor of, of Jas uh, Jasper Bilby. So what's the tower all about? What, you know for those of us watching what does the tower do or what did it do? Um, it helped map across the United States. Uh, a tower within a tower. It was it was stable. They were able to go up in and use triangulation to map. It gave longitude, latitude, and height okay. um, across okay. the United States. Um, the, his designs were made to be able to be portable. They had to be lightweight and um, uh, cost effective and easy for them to be manned to be put up and taken down. And Bilby was from Osgood. Correct? Bilby was from Osgood. Um, he, on his design and taking, the, he was able to, they mapped across the United States into Alaska. Um, you need triangulation, a line of sight. Once you have at least two towers with a specific distance between them, each tower would have a light and would send signals out. Well, three towers are are optimal and each one would take points of interest of the land and angles and once you have two angles if you have a, 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 a one edge that you know of a triangle you know the exact mm -hmm. distance of then you can get the other two okay. um, distances and it's extremely accurate once they got to a site they are finished with the site even they would put a coin of the exact those little brass caps or whatever yes. that we see um, and um, they would put this coin um, and and mark and log longitude latitude of where this was and even whether it was used as a baseline or whether it was used as the other part of the triangulization so are there any of these caps or coins here in Osgood yes there are about five of them um, and including they when they they did in honor of the tower that was put up, they did put a coin here. So, so there's one back here. Okay. You can get online. A lot of people are doing the geocaching mm -hmm. um, uh, games where they find these coins, and okay. then you find not only find them, but then you you have to do the longitude and latitude. Mm -hmm. Each marker has a number on it. And, then, and how many other towers are there in the United States still standing? There, are, there is only a partial one in Cape Canaveral, but not a complete one. This is the first complete one, that where it actually has the top and has where, where the gentleman would actually take his instruments and the light. You had a, a, a single man, signal man, a light man mm -hmm. that would go up and send light to the other tower so they can get the angle correctly and okay. you'd have the okay. measurements the, the equipment that would measure the angles for okay. you okay. Um, but uh, this is the the only complete one that's why it was so exciting that's why a lot of people wanted to be involved in this project and they had several different crews you yeah. have um, gentlemen that uh, put everything in order the, it is put up as like an erector set yes. um, each piece of metal had a number um, you had red 
for the inside, blue for the outside, so you can keep track of the different parts. Everything, Bilby had um, designed it so that is, if, if you were a neat person, <laughs> if you were an organized person, all you had to do was follow the instruction, put A, connect B, you know, uh, use this bolt. He had very specific bolts that he, for each each part of it. And it went up fairly quickly? And it went fairly quickly. All you needed were um, three leg men, and you needed two guys to tote it um, to the, the place to and hand things up. Then you had um, the gentleman that would sit up on top. Um, um, at least, well, it could be up to three men that would be up there. Um, one that recorded, one that was the instrument guy, and one that was in charge of the light. So um, it could be pretty tight up there. And, <laughs> and um, so there wasn't that many, you know, it didn't require a whole crew of 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 men. It was able to be put up and then, then this party would move to another spot once they got the signals. And it could probably be put up in a day? Yes. Yes. As a matter of fact, when they got this, they allotted it for two days because they were afraid the bolts um, would be rusted in Louisiana. Because this tower has withstood 18 hurricanes, um, seven direct hits on it. Um, so they were they were just a little unsure of what they would find as they were taking a, taking it apart, um, and it took them even, even though they allowed it for two days, it took them just they started kind of in the late morning and they finished by dinner. <laughs> so yeah. So Carol, what can you tell us about? Well, this? and that's really true. The towers were of various heights, and um, I'm not sure how tall this one is. But uh, when uh, my great-grandfather, Jasper Bilby, uh, came up with the specifications of it, as Janet mentioned, the red tower is the instrument part of the tower. The blue is for the, and you can see it's color-coded. On the inside tower, there are two separate towers, red tower, blue tower. And um, anyway, uh, it was cost-effective. Cost and when he came up with the design and got it going, they used to use timber towers. Took forever and very expensive. Right. And therefore, they went. He designed this, and depending on the height of the tower, they could go. Uh, it would take about five days, depending on the the height, to to erect it, and then about a half a day to take it down and move on. And wow. so. Um, Basically, her, um, he worked for the uh, U.S. Uh, Coast and Geodetic Survey under, and then Herbert Hoover was in the Commerce Department at that time. And uh, he was, and, and as this moved along, we were getting into the Depres Depression era also. This became so cost effective back then, it saved about $3 million. Uh, in in the construction and takedown and in today's dollars that would be about 40 million. Wow. So that and and um, my great grandfather was um, uh, promoted to U.S. Chief Signalman, but he started off as a reconnaissance man, and um, he uh, went to Holton, Indiana, which is about five six miles from here, and and there was another gentleman that was quite known in uh, Washington, D.C. that was in charge of a lot of surveying. His last name was Hayford. I, I don't recall his first name. And they became uh, acquainted in Holton, Indiana under a Holton land-based project. So Mr. Hayford engaged my great-grandfather as a reconnaissance man and that went on and because he did so well with it, he was promoted to U.S. Chief Signalman. Nice. These towers could measure within 1 16th of an inch wow. um, as far as with longitude and latitude and and, and uh, with the satellite systems there within a uh, millimeter. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Just very, you know, so they are even more precise. Um, these men would travel, like I said, usually they would start in the south um, and do some measurements. They, uh, some of the earliest um, survey teams, and of course they use different than uh, the Bilby Towers, uh, they mapped the Mason-Dixon line. Really? Um, these guys did all up and down the Mississippi. They did of course both coastlines, um, but they would start in the south to do measurements around Florida and the Keys, mm -hmm. and then as um, uh, then they would work themselves up. Hopefully, they could get in before 
you know, the weather um, would hit. And then uh, they could go back home for a brief period of time, but spring and summer they were back out again. So, and making measurements. But they were responsible too for even giving the accurate uh, measurements for Alaska before Alaska became a state. No kidding. With so. the math involved, and I find it extremely inspiring to it let kids know that you, this is what math and science does exactly. <laughs> and enables, um, even though that it was before our satellite. And they, satellites mm -hmm. are wonderful and great and everything but if we lose the art of even trying to uh, figure do out the manually. you know do it manually yes. um, and these these had it down to an art form oh, by yeah. the time you a know 19 of an inch with a tower like that oh yeah that's impressive so. thanks again for watching another edition of history in your own backyard remember travel, travel slowly and, and stop, stop often. often thanks see you later